Shannon, what do you read into this? <laughs> Skip, I, look, I think the thing is Paul Pierce is entitled to his opinion, although I don't agree with it. The reason why I don't agree with it, Skip, is his rationale because he didn't build a dynasty. Skip, does he realize that LeBron isn't the general manager? Do we realize we would not even be mentioning Paul Pierce had they not had Danny Ainge not pulled off the trade for Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen? Do, does he does he realize that, Skip? Like some some players go to teams that, for lack of a better word, and I hate to use this word, that the front office is incompetent. Everybody can't be Jerry West. Everybody can, doesn't doesn't have the argument no matter what you think of him, Skip, or of a Jerry Krause. And so, or, or Bob Myers. So everybody can't put together a team. And he's talking about, well, you know, he hopped around, he went and joined uh, D. Wade and Chris Bosh. Skip, does he realize that Robert Parrish and Dennis Johnson and Tiny Archibald were not drafted by the Celtics? Does he realize that a lot of the Lakers, the great from Kareem, and, and that helped them win titles, were not drafted by the Lakers? That Kobe, that Shaq was not drafted by the Lakers? Does he realize that? So what does he think about Shaq? Shaq went from Orlando to the Lakers to the Heat. Where Kareem was with the Bucks for, for what, seven years? Skip, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was about seven years. So I'm his Skip, if you want to say LeBron is not a top five player, okay, based on this, this, and this. But when you say he didn't build a dynasty because he wasn't fortunate enough to have Red Arback that was orchestrating and that was building – or he didn't have a Jerry West or Jerry Krause or R.C. Buford, you use that, that's your argument. You, you realize that's your argument, Paul Pierce. Paul, you won three series in nine years before KG and Ray Allen got there. Bruh, come on, Skip. He has never been the same since LeBron dropped 45-15 on him. And then he started ring chasing because he got so upset that LeBron busted him up. He went to, Skip, remember he went to Brooklyn. He and KG went to Brooklyn and teamed up with Joe Johnson and Darren Williams to try to get back. And LeBron bust him up again. And then he went to the Wizards. And then he went to the Clippers. Paul, bro, you looking bad. I mean, you look real angry, Paul. I'm just saying how it looks from the outside. If you want to say LeBron is in the top five pick, say based on what, what he's not been able to accomplish. But to say because he didn't build a dynasty? Nah, bro, that look real petty on your side, bro. Hmm. By the way, the exact quote was, what has LeBron done to build up any organization from the ground floor? The way Jordan came into Chicago, 84, and just took a really bad basketball franchise and lifted it up to those heights. Okay. Skip, now, they built, but Paul, let's Paul, get, Jerry Krause had something to do with that. Well, he didn't draft Michael, but after that, he made some nice little moves that helped. Okay. Let's forget about that. Let's talk about Paul Pierce. What's the psychology here? Let's psychoanalyze. What's the motivation? What's the driving <laughs> force here? Is it because of the rivalry? LeBron and Paul yes. went at it. They guarded each other often. And remember, the first two times they played in 2008 and 2010, Paul got the best of LeBron. So it, right. it wasn't like it was a mismatch all the way. It wasn't like Paul got shamed in this rivalry because he didn't get shamed early on. You're right. He got busted up later, but early he did more of the busting than LeBron did. So I'm, I'm going deeper here because just for the record, Paul is ranking LeBron right about where I have him ranked all time. So I don't have an enormous problem with what he where he ranked him but i do have a problem with the why of it because i don't think paul Thank pierce you. is speaking his heart on this there's something deeper going on and this is my take you, you said everybody has a right to their opinion well i'm going to express mine two cents worth of opinion <laughs> yeah. from a distance i believe that paul pierce saw lebron at his all-time greatest and he saw lebron at his worst sometimes in the very same game. And I believe that seeing LeBron at his worst is sticking in Paul Pierce's psyche right now, that he can't come to grips with, he can't make peace with what he saw from LeBron at his lowest moments and justify putting him in the top 10 above 
Kobe and Kareem and Magic and Bill Russell. Okay, so let's look back. Remember in 2008 in the conference semifinals, they met for the first time and it went seven games, but the seventh game was in Boston. And it wasn't like LeBron was a baby still because he'd already had the 48 point explosion against Detroit that got him to the finals against my Spurs and he got swept. Right. So LeBron is coming off getting swept in the finals. Here we go again into the next playoff run, conference semis, game seven at Boston. LeBron scored 45 in that game. Paul scored 41 in that game. It was one of the all-time game seven postseason shootouts. But here's what happened, and you're going to say I'm nitpicking, but this is, this is way bigger than a nit. I dare anybody to watch the tape of what happened in the last 141 of that game, minute and 41 seconds, or just go call up and look at the play-by-play. LeBron went 0 for 3 from the field in the last 141. He also missed, he went 1 for 2 from the free throw line, but the one miss at the free throw line came with 16.5 seconds left, and it was crucial. So LeBron missed a big 3 at 141. He missed another big 3 with with 25, I'm sorry, 2 with 25 seconds left, a little 5-foot sort of turnaround jumper. And then with 5 seconds left, he missed another 3, that would have made it a tight game. This is a seesaw back and forth game. So Paul saw LeBron go off and score 45 and then shrink at the end of the game. And then obviously in 2010, which was the, the last time around in Cleveland, I'm sorry, but this is just the facts. The, 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 this is what happened. It's the God's truth that LeBron went off in game three at Boston. This is in the 2010 playoffs. And I thought that was the best game I ever saw LeBron play. And I know you can talk about that game six and then the game seven later when he was with the Heat against Boston that you talked about. But listen, LeBron dominated on that Friday night in game three. And they're up two games to one. And then here we went. Game four, game five, game six. LeBron shrank and shrank and shrank and completely disappeared to the point that someone from his inner circle told ESPN that LeBron had to be sedated for games four, five, and six because he's having an issue in the locker room with a teammate. I'm sorry, I found that a little far-fetched that he was sedated. He played like he was sleepwalking. And Dan Gilbert, his owner, after he left and took his talents to South Beach soon after that, Dan Gilbert accused LeBron of quitting in games four, five, and six of that series. And I've never heard of any superstar get accused of quitting like that owner accused LeBron. Okay, but my point is this is sticking in Paul's psyche. He saw this firsthand. He's guarding LeBron as he disappeared. So why didn't anybody say when Kobe Bryant would not shoot the ball because everybody said he was selfish, why didn't people say Kobe quit? Phoenix. It's not you about remember Kobe, that game? It's about LeBron against Paul. No, Pierce. Just, but see, yeah, but, but, skip, Paul but you Pierce. keep saying everything. But no, but here's the thing. All you do is you go back to someone's lowest moment. You never mention anything about Magic Johnson and how in 1984 they called him tragic. You don't say that. It's always LeBron. 2011. I, I his, have but said you don't it, mention, but we're, we're talking no, no, you, no, about you where LeBron is ranked. But, but but my thing is, Skip, is that you, LeBron, if, if to let you tell it, to let Paul Pierce tell it, and let others tell it, only LeBron has had moments in the playoff in which he has not been his best. You do know in 2008, 2009, Paul Pierce had Kevin Garnett. If I'm not mistaken, Kevin Garnett was Defensive Player of the Year that year. And he had Ray Allen. What was Paul Pierce doing before he got those two guys? Nobody talks about Kobe shooting air balls. Not what about, about but Skip. But yes, Skip. But my point is, is that all you do, and Paul Pierce and others, is take LeBron at his lowest and say, see, nobody else has done that. But when I say others have had games like that, you said it's not about them. It's never about them because then it would go against your theory that LeBron James is only the all-time great player that's ever had failures. And you know that's not to be true because you've covered the game longer than I've been watching it. Okay. These are epic fails. 
This is 2010, <laughs> games four, five, and six. Then he goes to the Heat in 2011. And what happened in games four, five, and six of the NBA Finals versus Dallas? Same thing, right on cue. Three games of disappearance, of melting down, of chosen one becoming frozen one. He froze up you see? just you the way he did skip. against Boston the year before. Skip. But, but again, Shannon, this isn't just missing one shot. This is three games, four, five, and six, and then three more in the finals the next year, four, five, and six. And the game yeah. seven back in 2008 against Boston, it's a, a big body of failure that Paul knows better than anybody, and he's thinking in his head, I believe, I can't put that guy in the top five. Still, look, I'll, uh, my point is, is that you say, look at 2010. Skip, just because it happened more recent and other guys' failures happened more in the past, that does not justify it. You give so much more weight to LeBron. Because, well, he's a Panther, he's a GOAT. But if we're also saying that Magic, we're also saying Kobe. There have been other players that have had series that's been less than. That's my only point. Okay. Paul Pierce tried to say because he didn't build a dynasty. Bro, you didn't build a dynasty. Team Skip, general managers, what LeBron has done says, look, if my general manager, if I feel my general manager are incompetent and they cannot build a team around me, I'm going to go somewhere where they will be willing to build a team around me. And that's what the Miami Heat did. He went to the Lakers. That's what they're willing to do is build a team. Everybody's not going to have all back. Skip, red all back, thank you, because you know this. They drafted Larry Bird in his junior year. You could do that. And then, guess what? He started adding pieces. He makes the trade for Robert Parrish. He then, all of a sudden, he drafts Kevin McHale. So, Skip, things happen. That was competence. You build that team, but then okay. you add DJ. I got and it. then you add Tiny Archibald. So, for you to say, because he didn't build, he's not supposed to. He's a player. Player. Organization. And the general manager should put okay. the pieces. I, and LeBron I, I says if they that. can't do it, I, I'm gone. I agree. I, I agree. I don't like that premise from Paul Pierce. I'm talking about playoff failure. You're talking about Magic Johnson, who had one big mental blunder against Boston that, that got him the nickname through the offseason, Tragic. He came back and avenged that versus the Celtics. He actually... <laughs> ended up winning more than Larry Bird did. So he got revenge. He avenged himself. Kobe had a terrible series, in my view, a terrible finals against Boston. And then he came back yes. and he avged himself against Boston and beat them, right? So, 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 LeBron, so again, so didn't have, he, so, he at least he, he righted the wrong. So LeBron, so, LeBron winning three, so LeBron winning three titles after 2011, and two MVPs with three finals MVPs is not avenging himself. I'm confused. No, Because you said Kobe... Did, no, well, no, 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 that's not what you said. That's not what you said. Okay, but, you but, said but, Kobe but again, avenged himself. Uh, again, okay, Magic and, and Kobe came right back the next year in the finals against the same Celtics and got revenge, righted the wrong, the well, very Skip, next it, year. Skip, it worked out for Skip, them. it wasn't... Right? <laughs> Skip. You said so now you hold it because the Mavericks couldn't make it back, could not get past, could not get past OKC. Well, You're gonna hold that against LeBron because you said Kobe and Magic got revenge against the Celtics, the team that beat them. It's not LeBron's fault that the Mavs couldn't get back. That's not his fault. You you said you okay, want someone but, to make a tone. You want atonement for the mistake. He did that, and you still hold it against him. While you heap praise on the other guys. Okay. That's all I'm saying. That's it. All right. Okay, but in the end, so he beat the baby thunder. I'll give you that. He was the MVP of that. He beat my Spurs, but that was about Ray Allen making the greatest clutch shot I've ever seen to take LeBron off See? the hook, or he'd be 2-7 and seven in the finals. I mean, Ray Allen is a teammate. He makes a shot. Steve Kerr, John Paxson are teammates. They make shots. They don't save Jordan's legacy. I'm confused again. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.